Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Once again, I'm starting a new one here, just out of the blue, just because I know it has been a while since I talked about a last cryptid on my channel here. Thank you again for your patience, everyone, on this. I definitely will feature them. I just uh, like covering other topics, at least for now. But in this case, this is not a suggestion from the past or from someone else. This actually comes from a suggestion on a website, a random cryptid generator that I have nicely saved. Uh, this one actually uh, places some suggestions with the click of a button. So brand new suggestions. And in this case, it happens to fall on this cryptid. This cryptid has an eerie set of similarities associated with a very famous one here in the U.S. In fact, if you wanted to consider a cousin of sorts involving Bigfoot, then this is the closest thing to it. It just happens to be featured there in Pakistan. In fact, you're looking at a picture or representation of it here. It has a very unique name as well. It's known as the Barmanum. So let's go ahead and let's talk about all the information associated with this cryptid. I'll give my own thoughts and opinions, give all the info on its features, characteristics, evidence, sightings, and so on. Let me know what you guys and gals think as well with regards to this cryptid. Maybe some of you happen to be there as well in Pakistan, then you'll be able to tell me uh, if you have any local experiences too. They're definitely a creature that you kind of want to stay away from more on that here in just a moment. So what is this Barmanu? Again, if you wanted to compare it here to the all-star known as Bigfoot, that's essentially it. They share, share so many different similarities, common similarities, in other words, different creatures, but still altogether uh, eerily paralleling one another. For example, the features associated with it. If I were to describe this to you without naming Bigfoot, you would think it's a Bigfoot, but no, it happens to be the Barmanu. So the Barmanu, just like the average Bigfoot, is very, very tall. In fact, at minimum, it's around six to eight feet tall, and in some cases, even taller. And again, just like Bigfoot, it has a very strong muscular build, completely covered with dark brown or black hair, no skin featuring uh, anywhere other than, I guess, around the face area. Speaking of the face, it has a very human-like face. Again, just like cryptid involving Bigfoot. And then also has deep set eyes, flat nose, and a very strong brow ridge. Another thing that is also strong with it is this. If you wanted to know you're in the presence of the Barmanu, you basically have to smell it. Uh, it has a very distinct odor. It's known as smelling as that of a strong skunk or strong scent of rotten eggs. So if you happen to be over there in Pakistan, specifically in certain mountain ranges that I'll talk about here in a moment, then if you smell that, either the skunk or rotten eggs, you'll be in the presence of the barmanu. Another thing that's apparently very strong as well is its muscles. It has an incredible strength. Um, it's been known to use this set of features to basically leap around with great agility, jump long distances, in fact, with regards to those cliffs and other areas that again this creature lives in there in Pakistan. It uses this to be able to live there in peace because an interesting thing associated with the Barmanu is the fact that it is a solitary creature. Now the Bigfoot here in the U.S. it can be argued that it is also a solitary creature too to an extent um, at least from humans but it has its own set of cultures. In fact people have reported that there's families, right, associated with Bigfoot. There's hierarchies, there's cultures, societies, and so on. This, the, the thing involving Barmanu, is completely different. Not only is it away from humans altogether, but it also lives on its own. It doesn't live with other Barmanus. So if you happen to come upon the presence of a Barmanu, uh, you'll know at least that you'll be by itself, that it'll be by itself not having a chance of running into any of the other Barmanu surrounding that area, which is good because, again, sometimes this creature apparently has some bad characteristics to it. One more on that here in just a moment. Now, if you wanted to know exactly where this creature is, where it's located at, again, you have to go over there involving Pakistan. And somewhere over there, there's an area called the 
Kara Karam Ranges. I'm guessing these are some kind of mountains or some kind of landscapes there located near Paramar and Himalayas. So if you go to this area there, um, that's apparently where it lives. It lives in those regions. Another region it lives at is known as Chitral. Another region as well known as Gilgit. And then also the northwestern areas of Pakistan. It uses these isolated areas as far as these mountain ranges and so on to again live by itself, live away from people. That's why there seems to be very, very few sightings linked to it because being around those areas is already tough enough. But then imagine out of the blue finding one of these in those mountains. It's going to be very very rare. You're talking about needle in a haystack type stuff. But sightings have happened. And again, I'll talk about that here in just a moment. Another interesting characteristic, though, a bad one associated with this cryptid, with this bar menu, which again, Lincolns to the fact that you don't want to run into it is that it is known to attack animals and is also known to attack humans. When it comes to animals, it uses them actually for eating purposes. And in fact, it's been known to wear animal skins both upon its back and then also its head. When it attacks humans, not only does it attack males, like in other words, attacking them, attacking your average guy. I don't know if there has been any reports associated with deaths, but at least anything involving attacks, those do indeed happen, but at least with one aspect to it that keeps you kind of safe is the fact that when it attacks humans, it seems to be doing it at night. It's mainly a nocturnal creature. So yes, it does indeed attack men, but if you're a woman, this is where it gets even worse. Not only does it attack women, but it's been known to try to steal them and then apparently try to mate with them as well. Apparently the Barbanu does indeed love women, human women in other words, and when that happens and you happen to be out there by yourself or maybe with a group and you happen to be a woman and there's a bar menu there, uh, stay away because there's a chance again that this is a creature that's going to try to run off with you and then who knows what will happen afterwards. So definitely a creature to avoid altogether, not just because of the attacks, but also those other characteristics associated with it. Now related to those sightings that I was mentioning earlier, many of those sightings actually come from one person. There was apparently a researcher, uh, someone that was out there, a Spanish zoologist by the name of Jordi Magriner. He was in turn trying to find this bar menu. He ended up calling him the wild man because of, again, the uh, crazy characteristics, the features associated with this cryptid. And so he was out there in Pakistan. Apparently he was out there throughout multiple areas. Uh, he was able to actually collect more than 50 first-hand sighting accounts. And with them, they were able to each of those eyewitnesses basically state that they had met or come into some kind of interaction with the bar menu. And they all had the same characteristics associated with them. Apparently he would show them pictures of other things involving monkeys, ice, like the uh, frost man, stuff like that, like different ranges of, of animals or cryptids. But no, they seem to just point more along the line of this wild man, this ape-like man, as they were calling him. And so he was using his research to showcase that, yes, something was truly out there, a bipedal humanoid man out there in Pakistan. Unfortunately, and almost tragically, um, the researcher Jordi McGriner actually ended up being murdered there in Afghanistan in 2002 so all of his research was basically halted then but again before that happened then he was able to showcase so many things that were out there as far as these sightings and eyewitness accounts there was a big search though that occurred apparently in May 1994 and that was when him and another associate were out there late in the evening and they were able to, I think, record using a primitive voice box some kind of unusual guttural sounds. And that they think that this was associated with the bar menu, like they actually captured one of the strongest pieces of evidence which was this, an actual voice recording of this creature. So fascinating stuff. If that truly is the bar menu, then they were able to do almost the impossible, and that is capture uh, something out there associated with the creature in terms of its voice, its actual voice. Interesting stuff. 
Now, let's also talk about the impact that this creature has had throughout other mediums. So apparently this creature has been featured not just on movies, TV shows, but also documentaries. In fact, it's been featured on the famous TV show Destination Truth. There was a documentary made about it as well called The Wild Man of Pakistan, which showcased that. Uh, more information on that cryptid. There has also been articles. There's been books written about it as well. Again, uh, the researcher that I was mentioning earlier, lots of evidence there too. But again, all that information, not really 100% any concrete evidence in terms of photographs or anything along the lines of actual video footage, but still it does have an impact to the point that to this day, people are still trying to find it and they talk about it throughout multiple mediums to see if that can gain more interest and then see if maybe one day somebody an investigative journalist or another filmmaker will finally be able to capture it in all of its glory out there in the wild. Now the problem with that too is that apparently the bar menu attracts more nefarious people. There have been people out there as well that have been fabricating stories, hoaxes, and stuff like that, either to gain attention or to actually try to create some kind of financial crime. I didn't see much information on this though as to how that is. I mean, what could you possibly do um, other than create like a fake suit and pretend, have somebody in it pretending that they're the bar menu. But apparently that's been happening. People have been using this creature, this cryptid, to basically um, pull one over on others as well. And when that happens, it's just one of the bad things associated within the world of cryptids. But either way, though, everyone else that talks about it and features more information on it, um, they've been putting it more, uh, they've been doing things more positive. Like they're trying to find more actual evidence as opposed to using this to, to pull one over on other people that are out there. One last thing associated with sightings, uh, the researcher that I was mentioning earlier, his evidence shows that the sightings started around the 1990s, could have been earlier, but again, documented stuff uh, started around that time period. If you wanted to feature some of the most recent sightings, apparently in 2019, just five years ago from the date of this video, that's when a group of hikers apparently saw this creature. They saw the Barmanu walking around that area there within the mountains of Pakistan. They were able to describe it exactly as I mentioned it before, as a large primate, bipedal primate, and also having that thick fur, long arms, and so on. But with this creature, um, they were also apparently able to see footprints. How about that? Bigfoot, right? Bigfoot footprints are famous here in the U.S. Well, apparently the Barmanu has that as well over there in Pakistan. So they were able to at least get some evidence with regards to that footprints. And who knows what happened to those footprints, um, if anybody did a cast or anything like that. But at least that's uh, some of the most recent sightings just five years ago when it comes to this creature. And that's pretty much it. That's all the information associated with the Barmanu, Pakistan's version of the Bigfoot. So still, lots of eyewitness accounts, at least more than 50 people that were able to tell that information to a researcher, recent sightings, and then others going back to the 90s, maybe even before. Lots of documentaries, TV shows, movies, talking about it, and apparently people still seeing it within those mountain ranges in Pakistan. But again, no 100% concrete evidence. That's why it still remains a little bit skeptical as to its existence, at least until finally someone is able to capture it. But if anybody there is from that local local area there in Pakistan, maybe those mountain ranges happen to be traveling around, who knows, let me know, post it in the comments, see um, if you have more experience to share with regards to any encounters. Either way though, again, it's advised to stay away from this creature and at least you'll have a warning of sorts, at least with regards to its smell. Remember, if you smell anything along the lines of a skunk or rotten eggs, then you'll know you'll be in the presence of the bar menu. All right, everyone. Thanks again as always. Take care.